He said to be here at 3.30 and it's 3.45 hour work and she still isn't here. Maybe we should practice some until she comes. Yeah, man. It doesn't make any sense to just sit here. by one. 
They don't come by two, but they come by ten. How did we get here? Why did they snap iron collars around our necks and chains around our feet? Stripped naked, holes down with salt water, branded like animals. Packed side by side, little air, hard wooden floor, and lots of pain. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Women used cotton skirts as rope to hang themselves. Other slaves jumped overboard and were met by hungry sharks. And yes, some mothers threw their children into the water, setting their souls free from what was to come on the other side of the Atlantic. It is estimated that as many as 100 million Africans died in bondage aboard ship or jumped overboard into the ocean. Their bones line the Atlantic Ocean like human railroad tracks. A railroad track of human beings longing for home. Jamaica, some went to Florida, Virginia, and other parts of the South. Some went to Barbados, Brazil, and Trinidad. They could be bought and sold like cattle by people who called themselves human. raped us, beat us, hosed us, and shamed us. But through it all, we still kept on fighting, still kept the faith, and kept on believing that our change would soon come. Now, there were rebellions, okay, and some slave masters were killed. But you know, sometimes the rebels were turned in by fellow slaves. They were too scared to go against the master. Not me. I wouldn't be afraid to go against the master. I wouldn't have no master. Slave master, I wouldn't let nobody on me. Malcolm, don't you know that slavery hasn't ended yet? This is a different time now. What do you call brothers selling and killing brothers over drugs that make white people rich? Aren't they serving the slave master? 
And when you think that you are nothing, unless you have a pair of tennis shoes that cost a hundred dollars, money that goes into a white people's bank account, and aren't you serving the slave master? I don't see how they didn't go crazy. Hmm. Well, what do you do? What do you do when things are going so bad for you that you think you're going crazy? I pull out my drum and start playing them until I don't hurt so much anymore. Mm -hmm. I turn around music and dance. Even if I have to dance by myself, it still makes me feel better. Tina? What do you do? I watch TV when I don't feel like dealing. Well, they didn't have TV to watch. When the slaves weren't in the field, they sang the songs and danced the dances they knew from Africa. They also told stories about things that they remembered from home and weaved in experiences that they were having here. These stories were told over and over again by storytellers. Now they're called folk tales. And they're an important part of African-American folklore and culture. We were told many stories back home in Mali, but I've never heard an African-American folk tale. Hmm. Mama O'Quelly, do you know one that you can tell us? Uh, well, one of my favorites is called The People Could Fly. Will you tell it to us, please? You'd like to hear it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, well, should I tell it now or wait until after the audition? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this is a story about black people like you and me who lived on a continent called Africa and were known as Africans. Now, these Africans knew something very special that some folks today would call magic, but they didn't call it magic. They just knew themselves to be spiritual human beings who could direct their minds and bodies to do whatever they chose to do. When they wanted to do something, first they formed a sharp picture in their mind. Then they would actually imagine themselves doing it. Give what they were doing a name, and pretty soon they knew how to do it. Now one of the things they taught themselves to do in this way was to fly. Yeah, they really could fly. Whenever they said the name or cold words for flying, the spirit within them gave them the power to just lift up like great big birds and fly way up in the sky and go wherever they wanted to go. Now, sad to say, years went by and little by little, <coughs> some of them forgot pleasure. They forgot what they once knew, okay? They forgot how to use the spirit or spiritual power that they had that helped them to fly. But some of those who remembered how to fly were among those stolen from Africa and forced to be slaves. Away from the motherland, they didn't have time to think about much other than how to survive in their harsh new environment. Our story takes place on one of those cotton plantations where the slaves were forced to work from sun up to sundown, day after day and were whipped by an overseer to make them work faster. Come on now, y'all, get a move on. You're moving too slow. Dave's most gone and you ain't done even half of what you're supposed to do. Shut that brat up. The woman tried to move out of the way to protect her and her baby, but his cracking whip found them both. Wah-psh! And she and the baby let out a scream as they fell to the ground. The other slaves were scared by this and tried to work faster as they moved out of the range of the whip. Toby, an old, wise-looking slave with gray hair and tattered clothes, moved toward her and whispered as he helped her to her feet. Sarah, you got to get away. If you stay here any longer, them beatings is going to kill both you and that young of yours. Sarah, sobbing softly, said, I can't take no more. But where I going to go? 
what I'm going to do. If I'm not trying to run, he'll catch me for sure. And he'll kill both me and my baby. Toby said, try to keep working while I talk to you. If any come nearby, make believe you's telling the young and the hush. Now put your head down low and listen to me good. It be a long time we've been here. And it seems like we about forgot what we used to know. Remember, Sarah? We used to fly. Shh. Don't say nothing. Just listen hard to the words we used to say. Cool, 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 now. Go. At first, Sarah didn't understand. She looked at old Toby with a blank expression on her face. What? What that you say? I don't know what you're talking about. Toby whispered loud at the time. Who could yell? Who could yell? Who could yell me now? Go! Slowly, an expression of recognition stole across Sarah's face because she remembered what the words meant. And with a little cry of joy, she threw back her head and lifted her arms up into the air and her feet started to leave the ground. Then she felt the spirit power within her steal into her arms and she clapped them once, twice, three times and flew higher into the air. The other slaves were amazed as they stopped their work to watch Sarah climbing, climbing higher into the sky with her baby on her back. The overseer, Mr. Tom, noticed them all looking, but he couldn't figure out what they were looking at at first. All he could see up in the sky was a dark object that looked like a big old bird with a hump back soaring through the air. Then he noticed Toby. He went from one row of cotton to the other and stopped him to say something to some of the slaves and he pointed his horse in his direction. You there! What you doing? You old good for nothing, nigga. Get on back to work. The crap fell on the back of a whip of a slave standing near Toby. And he just threw back his head and said the word loud to everyone to hear. Koo kooka yali. Koo kooka yali. Koo kooka yali. Now go. And the slaves who knew how to fly sent the, ro- the words back down the rolls of cotton. And pretty soon you heard the flapping of arms. And their feet left the ground and they dropped their holes as they were flying, flying, flying up into the sky and back to their home in Africa. Now the slaves who didn't know how to fly were left behind. But they told their children about the people who could fly, who told their children, generation after generation, until here I sit today, telling it to you. That was a bumping story, Mama Quinny. I mean, that story was good. <laughs> but how did Toby say you know, those big birds get them to fly? Well, even though they hadn't heard the words for a long, long time, their meaning was buried deep in their memory, okay? When they saw Sarah flying, and they heard Toby saying those words, it all came back. And they remembered again what they had forgotten for so long. I see, at least, I think I see. Is it like when we learn the names or the words that go with the things we do? Mm-hmm. The name and the thing are joined together in our mind? Right. Let me show you the real deal, see? When I say walk, I walk, I know walk means to do this. And if I say think, I may spin, I know spin means to do this. That's why I say dance while I may dance. I know the word dancing with my feet and body like this go together. Are you there? Yeah. All right. That's it. Mama O'Quelly, can you please explain it again? I said that we are always saying those little words got them to fly. Kung Kung Kiyali? Well, the magic wasn't really in the words themselves, okay? I mean, you're repeating those words over and over again. It's not going to help you to lift up and fly like they did. But to those slaves, the hearing of those words, it stirred a long-forgotten memory. Just as Kwame showed us, right? The words walk, 
spin, and dance are paired in our brain with certain actions, right? Well, the word kung kung kayali, it reminded them of, well, what they had stored deep inside, but just had forgotten, okay? Now, folk tales usually have a lesson to teach us. Can anyone tell us what lesson we can learn from this story? About how powerful people forgot how to be powerful? Yes. Maybe also by the way Africans got to learn things. You're both right. They were powerful. And we learned what we knew because we had a system. Now, I've already told you what it is. Does anyone remember? I think they use their imaginations to learn. But I'm not sure about how it works. When I got my two-wheel I told myself I can ride this thing. I know I can ride it. I imagine myself just flying down the street telling myself I can ride this thing. Before it was warm enough for me to try for real. <laughs> I was ready, wasn't scared. And in just a little while, I can ride it just like I did in my mind. Is it the highest known well? That's an excellent example, Tina. And I think that can be applied to learning anything. Not math or science. Sounds like you're scared of math. You spooked yourself into thinking that you can't do it. Don't you know that African people created math and science? And you're all African people. Not being able to do that stuff is more than a belief, Mamu Kweli. It is hard. Well, I know it seems that way. All right. Our people created math to help them study the stars. This helped them to understand cycles, cycles that affect all areas of our lives. Math is just a system, a system of using numbers and letters to symbolize principles that we use all the time. We do? Half. Okay. Um, all right, see this picture of this basketball player right here on the wall? He appears to be flying, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, the next time you see Michael Jordan play, remember that when he practices, he uses math principles and his imagination to figure out as fast as the speed of light, how fast he must run, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How high he must jump, and who, how much force he must use to slam dunk the ball into the basket. And then when game time comes, he lets his God self take over. And he soars through the air, and he makes Slam Duncan look easy. Michael Jordan knows the Kun Kun Kayali code word. Ah. <laughs> he does. That's why they call him Air Jordan, because he can fly. <laughs> Mama Quelly, is it really that easy? Yeah. Let me explain the process. When we think, we form a sharp image in our mind. Now to learn math, first you've got to learn the rules and the formulas. As we apply the formulas and our imagination, we imagine ourselves solving the problem. Then the spirit within us, working through our minds, gives us the right answer every time. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, don't you know that your brain is the most fantastic computer ever created? It is. And it will do anything that you program it to do. And you're always programming whenever you think and whenever you imagine things. You know, my own Quelly, I've noticed that even the dumbest kids in school huh? Some other kids in school uh -huh. know all the words to all the rap songs, one by one. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know their time table. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, my Nisha, it has to do with the fact that they want to know the rap. But they don't think that the time tables are important enough to learn. Multiplication tables have to be memorized, right? Yes. <clears throat> and the easiest way to memorize something it's your rhythm. Anybody want to try it? You all can do it. Let me try. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Counting is the basis, that's when math begins. We need math in life. For what? For many things and measures, this is fake capacity. What money brings? Addition, subtraction, we've already tried. So take it up a level, let's multiply. Two twos are four, and two fours are eight. And two eights are what? Sixteen. You got it straight. The timetable's what you memorize. And when you know it's a twelve, then you realize that no matter how hard the problem Seems to be just stick to the basics and it's one, one two, three. three. Number group to what we're making now. The only limitation is what you allow. Multiplying can be fun, and don't you forget it. If you're not down with math, you may live to regret it. Drug time violence is negative. Knowledge time power is positive. And that's how I choose to live. Positive, positive, positive. Good role models are the real heroes. Put together groups and nothing what you got. Zero! You see? You see how creative we can all be when we try? And you were all moving the same way. Africans, African Americans, and African Caribbeans alike. You know, maybe I'm more the same thing we talk. And we all create in our own way. Keep us down, we'll say. Cool, cool, yeah. 